Karim, you are a co-chair of a working group within the UN Zero Hunger Challenge that deals with smallholder productivity. Why is it important for the group to distinguish between smallholders and smallholder farmers? We have a broad understanding of smallholders. It's not only farmers, it's, it's smallholder uh, actors, if you like, mm -hmm. in the rural space um, who, are, uh, who can be farmers or part farmers and uh, traders and, and so on. How's the work of the group structured? Three things, we've got definition, what smallholders are, we've got policy measures and we've got metrics. The aim of the working group is to identify measures to double the productivity of smallholders. What is the time frame that we're looking at? There's one element, uh, one large part of the working group's um, effort, which is devoted to looking at metrics. How can we measure? Uh, how can we measure the achievement of 100% increase of uh, smallholder productivity and in incomes? And that one is looking at uh, kind of the the period in which we uh, hope to achieve um, certain types of indicator of of uh, smallhold uh, one hundred percent increase in smallholder productivity and incomes. The metrics discussion measurement is is still ongoing between the specialists of the agencies. A number of indicators have been discussed and in relation to those indicators, timelines, uh, you know, by 2030, what we would hope to achieve. Um, and, uh, and the idea is that this can inform uh, broader um, monitoring and monitoring around the sustainable development goals and the, uh, that are being defined uh, by the international community. What about the policy measures? What are they focused on? Critical elements of those policy measures that have been defined so far uh, include increasing investments in smallholders and smallholder uh, productivity and improving um, both agricultural and non-agricultural uh, economic opportunities for smallholders and uh, gender equality, ensuring that um, that that women have equal access to services, we equal access to inputs, to land, to natural resources. What is the UN Secretary General going to do with those suggested policy measures? He will use those to inform. Uh, other initiatives of the United Nations, but particularly um, to see how they, they might inform the uh, Sustainable Development Goal process going forward. So I guess this will still be relevant for the ongoing SDG target discussions? This should be relevant to the broader discussions, particularly relating to hunger and, uh, and food. Since you are a former focal point of the platform, for the OECD at the time, I would like to ask you what you think should be the thematic foci in that post-2015 period and which ways and means you think should be applied. The first one, which we're working on a lot in, in IFAD at the moment, is uh, ensuring that inclusive rural transformation and fostering inclusive rural transformation is at the center of or is embedded in the post-2015 development agenda. The second area uh, that I personally um, believe is this issue of how best to work in fragile states and situations and, uh, and how best to promote um, an inclusive rural development process or transformation process in those, in those fragile situations and in protracted crises. Now we have some various tools available. One set of tools is in the, in, can be seen to be in the framework for action that's been developed mm. by the uh, CFS on protracted crises. Another set of tools uh, to help us think through these issues we hope um, will come out of our work on, on the next DFAD rural development report in 2016. We hope will help us uh, as a development community, rural development focused community to uh, put more effort into 
analyzing contexts, uh, understanding contexts, um, while we develop uh, interventions um, at country level to consider how we can uh, uh, have more flexible and tailored approaches to different, different types of fragile situation. Why do we need the concept of rural transformation? What was wrong with rural development? We talk about rural transformation because we want to ha help foster a more inclusive change process in, in rural areas. Now development has a concept of change within it as well, as, uh, in, but we're talking more of transformation now just to emphasize, to emphasize this, this need for a sea change. What is the connection to the rural-urban linkage discussion? What's important for us uh, as we focus on rural development is to understand the implications of, of uh, these transformations for rural people and the opportunities they may provide and also the, the difficulties that they may uh, produce. And so we're, we are, we've looked at this in various ways. While we've if had a, produced uh, in 2014 a policy brief on the post-2015 a development agenda that was focused on uh, the rural urban issue and how we might leverage uh, rural urban linkages for uh, more inclusive um, rural development. So this, this is one, one area. Then there's a broader um, policy level debate this year leading up to the third international conference organized by, by Habitat, uh, by UN Habitat. And uh, that will have a, a strong focus on one. One of the key focus areas will be on rural urban linkages and how to how to um, ensure that rural urban linkages work uh, best for urban development and rural development. Thank you very much.